Hola, welcome to Our What A Week. We apologize if this podcast was posted late. We were a bit delayed this week. Many of us were trying to get roasted chicken and some desserts we love from two well-known outlets. We had to make a plan in case they were going to be blocked off by some angry people in red shirts. But we made it. So welcome back to Wow What A Week. What a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Shit up. Welcome to Wow What a Week. Our comedian is in the building. The, the problem is he's more than a comedian. He's bigger than comedy. In fact, comedy looks at him and says, damn, you look good in heels. Many people were actually eager to know and see what our next guest would be wearing on his feet. Considering that his choice in footwear once had SA in a bit of a pole spin. But to paraphrase what he once said about that, Whatever he's wearing, he can still kick your ass. Or just assorted asses in general. Please give a warm welcome to Siv, pole position, Ngesi. Hello, hello, hello. My dude. It's great to be here. My man, it's good to have you here. How are you doing? Me, it's just been a multi-award winner, that's all. Just another, another average day in my life, you know, just yeah, doing so, what i got to do. In fact, it's a slow day because you're not picking up an award. I know, it's just <laughs> such a terrible day, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, jokes aside, it's great to be here. Your nails look great. Oh, uh, yes, I did my nails last week. I can see my eye. Uh, they look great. Uh, you, you should see my toes. My toes also look me great. Me too, I got mine done on Sunday. But uh-huh. it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Dude, uh, first things first, I want to thank you for the feedback because you are a WoW fan. Uh, You pick up the phone and you call me. It's like, that episode was amazing. Uh, Why do you do that? You don't have to. I'm not, yes. I absolutely love watching people succeed. I watch people succeed. It makes me happy. It makes me feel like I'm succeeding. When I see people... Um, operating below their uh, their best, it actually upsets me. Uh, so I love seeing people doing well. Okay, so you're about, if you are a V12, but there's only two valves firing, only, uh, you know, then, like, what, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I don't like people... Um, going below what they can do. Uh, even people who are lazy, it, makes, it irritates me. But yeah. if I think you have great potential, sure. I'm, I'm keen to give a, a helping hand to be able to help you get to your best. Yes, sir. Um, but yeah. A lot of people that know your story talk about how with the kind of mother you had, there was no way you were going to fail. You know, I think people like me who had a mother like mine are either going to be incredible or a waste. Or committed somewhere yeah, in a padded yes. room. Uh, my mother thought I was God's gift to humanity. Uh, my mother thought that I was the greatest thing since sliced bread. My mother worshipped the ground I walked on, but still was all about discipline and respect. And losing her has uh, has definitely, it's been hell. It's yeah, been uh, yeah. a year and a bit of hell. And um, I'm, I'm surprised I'm even been able to stand here and actually have a conversation with you. If Ma was still here right now, uh, what conversation would you have had with her this morning? Just given what's happening in your life, like you had a gig last night, the shit happening around the world, there's a World Cup happening. So what kind of conversation My do you think? My mother was all about excellence. I think we would have spoken about Sia. Hot Saturday. Sia. Yo, yo, yo. It's yeah. Sia's moment. My baby, why aren't you there? Call Sia. Call him now. Let's see. Let's talk to Sia. Uh, my mother was all... My, my mother loved Sia. They had a, a great relationship. Um, mm. They used to conversate. My mother even said, Yo, the cricket, they're playing so badly. They must just get Sia in there. Um, um, you know, for me, my biggest, biggest, biggest hurt is that I was just about to buy her the car of her dreams, oh, yes. to travel the world together. Yeah. You know what I mean? There were things. And if you're listening to this, don't wait. Just do it. Mm. Uh, just absolutely do it. Mm. Uh, I wanted her to downscale her life. Her, hi- her life was a bit seven-bedroom house, oh, big yes. car. Yes. I wanted her to downscale to make us and then help her live her dream. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, man. Uh, and and don't, don't wait till your mother's laying on the mortuary table to tell her you love her. Uh, because for me, when I saw my mother in the mortuary table, I said to her, girl, I'm not going to tell you I love you here. Mm. Uh, I've told you I love you for 37 years. The day Ma passed away, who told you about it? So the, the day my, I actually got the best gift my mother ever gave me. Mm. At 8 o'clock, I went on Do Not Disturb. 
My mother died at 8.05. Jeez. They did CPR on her for 45 minutes. So where was um, she? At home, and at I home. was at my home, okay. but I was doing a job. Okay. My mother didn't want me to witness her having CPR on her. My elder sister saw that. If I had witnessed them doing CPR on my mother for 45 minutes, I would be in the Alps uh, with a big beard, and I would have lost my senses. So who calls you after uh, your phone is off? Do not disturb. My elder sister. Mm. How did they break it down to you? It's funny. I, it's, I've never wanted to think about it. Yeah. I just had like 26 missed calls. Mm. I think she said, mom's gone. Jeez. And then... I but remember, also, what else can she say? Yeah. And then I remember hitting the wall, hitting the window and mm. screaming and thinking to myself, if this window breaks and I fall through, I'm mm. on the 16th floor and I yeah. die, it's fine. Mm. And then I called my best friend, Paki, and I just said, where are you? Mm. And she knew immediately what, and then she showed up like five minutes later. Mm. That's all I said. I said, where are you? Where the fuck are you? Where are you? Mm. And then I remember running and seeing my mother lying on the ground and just kissing her and just took off her, her ring and just, just man, it's, I, I, it's the, the worst day of my life. Mm. Uh, the worst day of my life. And I, I was in a bike accident on Sunday. Yeah. And I remember as I was about to crash into the car, I didn't fear death. Mm. I've never feared death, mm. but I definitely feared death less. I remember thinking to myself, oh, okay, here it goes. An inconvenience. I was like, ah, oh, inconvenience. <laughs> then I remember when, when I hit the, whatever, and my hand was bleeding, I was like, ah, man, I'm supposed to have a, a manicure tonight. Damn yeah. it. Mm. There's something about losing my mother that's made me not want to be on this earth. Mm. And, 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 not, I, I, and I, not in a suicidal no, way. No, no, yeah. not suicidal. Yeah. I understand how people in their lives now. I never mm. understood it before. Mm. But I get it now. I get why people end it. Mm. Because for me, the pain is so unbearable. Mm. Uh, losing my mother is so unbearable. It's just, a dying would be a lot easier. Mm. <clears throat> and I don't believe humans are supposed to be so close to one person. Uh, there's no way. There's no way. Do you think sometimes it's to our own peril that we have so much control of our brains as human beings that for other animals, like, life goes on? Yeah. <laughs> I think, that's what I think. I had a debate with my best friend. Yeah. I think in the olden days, we weren't this close to one person. I think we were community orientated. Yeah. I think we used to leave when you were 12, 13 and go and start your own family in the exactly. old days. Yeah. Um, if, but you would never be this close to one person. You were suckling on five five to ten different boobs yeah, uh, in yeah. the community. We were animals. We were, guys, yeah. Imagine me crying for a year over my mother or when I have to go hunt. Yeah. Oh, I can't hunt. I'm busy crying <laughs> over my mother. A woolly mammoth can is looking imagine, at you and saying, what the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> this reminds me of my mother's jacket. Ah, what's that, man? We're not built to be so close to one person. I'm sticking to it. That's your story. You're yeah, sticking, sticking to it. I'm sticking to it, yeah. So your friend, uh, Mpaki, mm -hmm. uh, like you're saying, your mom passes away and she was there for you immediately. Oh, no, no, she was there. But you build friendships like that. Let's talk about that. Um, I mean, I know for a fact a friend of yours was in a wheelchair in the US mm -hmm. and you're like, oh shit, let me fly over and help you look after my godchild. I mean, not many friends do that. So, sorry, sorry, I do my research. So I want to correct. I don't need to help him. That, that guy in the wheelchair can take care of his son himself. Yeah. Um, Oh, all I did is I go there and help him with the charity that he has. Oh, yes, yes, but yes. But yes. to be a parent, I'd, that guy, Alex Stone, a single father of one kid, he has cerebral palsy, he's in a wheelchair. He wouldn't accept help from me even if I gave it to him. I have to force him a lot of the times. Yeah. I, but, but, but you are that friend, though. Yeah. So for me, I am... I build a small little community around me, mm. right? Mm. And that community, if one of my friends accidentally killed someone, I'm the call. Because mm. as when we have to dig the person underground, I'm there. Mm. And then when we finished, I'll be like, ah, what did you do, man? What happened? Mm. I ask mm. questions later. But if you fuck with me, I'll mm. cut you quick and fast. Mm. Um, uh, I don't play with friendships. Friendships for me, I think a lot of people, their, their goal is relationships and having a girlfriend or whatever. My thing is having a great um, circle of friendship. Uh, it's funny, Musi Mamani and I are very close, and Musi recently sent me uh, that, that, um, that Kevin Hart video of like, your shit is my shit. Oh, yes, you know that, yes, that, that yes, video? Yes. And Musi was like, my blood. Because for me, if you're in my circle, you're there for life. Mm, mm, Unless mm. you fuck with me, then I cut you. I want to talk about loyalty to a fault. Mm. 
let me tell you why I want to talk about loyalty to a fault, because I think me and you are similar in that regard. Um, and again, I know you are loyal to a fault. Like I said, I do my research. And I'm the kind of guy, for instance, if my woman comes to me and says, and it happened the other day, so-and-so at work spoke to me in a certain way that I didn't like, or it made me feel a certain way. In my mind already, I'm starting to write that person off. Oh, I, easy. I, I don't even know that side of the story yet. Easy, me too, quick and fast. But the other day, I'm like, what the fuck? You're having coffee with her. Yeah. But she's the same person that spoke... I I'm and and I know you are. I know I, you're that I am guy. That guy. <laughs> I will cancel someone for you just because you forgive them. It doesn't mean now I'm going to forgive them. Banganya, banganya, straight forward. Ask Paki. Ask my best. My best friend yeah. will tell you. Yeah. I'll cut people who've messed with Paki. Sure. Uh, they're gone. Mm. And even she's like, "Ah, oh, babes, mercy, mercy, forgiveness." Yeah. No, I don't mm. give a damn. Not cut. Where do you get it from? This sense of justice that you have, because. You have it amongst your friends, but you also have it generally that if you see an injustice, you're on some fuck that. Hold my beer. Okay, sorry, hold my orange juice. Orange juice. <laughs> orange juice <man. laughs> um, my mother, man. My mother used to cry on the bedsides of perfect strangers. Mm. Uh, my mother used to, Christmas, would get like groceries. Mm. Like, you know, from the, the, the thing at the end of the year. Yeah, in gum gum, that, that, in gum gum. I'm told yeah. your mother was literally a modern day Mother Teresa yeah. and you hated it. Yeah. Okay, and as a kid, she'll be like, okay, groceries for December. I'm like, yay, biscuits. Lucky pocket. Then she'll go, this is for that family. 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 And I just be like, what, what do you mean? We have nothing. Yes. And you're giving us That's that. That's enough for all of us. That's, that's, she yeah. should give away that. Oh, wow. And then on Sundays, I speak Kukule to see fetch on a su uh, Sunday to go home. Yeah. We'd stop at the Red Cross and we'd all be crying on the bedsides of kids we didn't know or people we didn't know. I just never understood this woman. I'm like, then some days I'd wake up in the morning, yeah. someone from Tata is in our bed. I'm getting kicked off to sleep with my sister. I'm like, woman, what are you doing? And now I'm 38. Yeah. And my, I'm doing my, my, my tax. Yeah. And and my tax guy is like, what is this section? Yeah. I'm like, no, these are my loans to people. These are my donations to people. Yeah. And he's like, we got to make this site smaller. Yeah. So now to the tax guy, we tell them that it's, it's investments, yeah. but it's donations <laughs> and loans. Uh, and that's what I got from my mother, and I, I never want to change it. Now, often as black kids, you know, we know not to speak out of turn. But your mom also allowed you to... Have your rants? Uh, no, eh, no, not to her. Not to her. My mother would murmur. Were they internal? My mother would smack me in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> my mother sometimes used to, or when she was on Facebook, she'd be like, "My baby, please, man, you like to swear, man. People love you. Please don't swear." Yeah. My mother, my, okay, my mother was a disciplinarian. I, I think people sometimes see me mm. and think that my mother my, allowed you. My mother, no, yeah. my mother yeah. was an absolute. Tyrant at times. Sure. Like she was a disciplinarian. She was a principal. Mm. But she knew I was special from an early age. Okay. So she knew, she saw the rants okay. and she tried to and, and, and control those. But she mm. knew I was different. And she always tried to say, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. You're not famous. You're infamous. Um, so, but when I, when I showed her that I was doing drag, she was like, okay, my baby, anything you want to do. I did, when I showed her, I did poll mm. at her memorial service. The priest said, your mother used to share your drag videos oh, wow. and your poll videos on the WhatsApp group for the church. Yes. Conservative <laughs> black church. My mother's going, look at my baby on a poll. Look at my baby wearing makeup. You're straight, but he's wearing makeup. Oh, my baby so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Um, my mother was absolutely obsessed with me. Uh, so that's why for me, when someone tells me I'm great, mm. I'm like, yeah, but my mother told me I was great for 37 years. But thanks for your input. It's greatly appreciated. Mm. If you were to write a parenting book, mm. like parenting according to mama, mm. what are some of the gems you'd put in there that you'd apply on your child my one day? My, I, I can be in an airplane and I hear kids screaming and shouting. Mm. I don't mind. Yeah. Kids can be kids, but discipline. Mm. Discipline is everything. Yeah. Please and thank you. Mm. Yes, sir. No, sir. Speak when you're spoken and to. And those are basics. Basics for me. They um, should be basics. Yeah, my mother. Yeah. Yeah. 
a kid who can't say please, a kid who can't say thank you, you ain't getting nothing from me until you learn those words. And a kid who can't say um, either I beg your pardon or ask uh, Yeah. Like, no. where? No, for what me, do you mean, hey? I, I hate it when kids, sometimes I see white kids, and white kids take with one hand, and yeah. I'm like, why is this kid taking with one hand? <laughs> Where's your second hand? <laughs> and the thing about, he has no idea. He wasn't exactly. He has no idea. I'm judging you Different for something culture. you don't know. Different cultures. Uh, absolutely. Um, and for me, my mother was a principal. Yeah. But you know what I wish? I wish my mother had the opportunity to parent yeah. with access. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I wish she would, was able to be at all my sporting events, you know, and be at everything and be able to parent me without thinking about how am I going to pay for the bills. Oh, yes. Do you know what I mean? Because I think sometimes I was an irritation mm. because mm. I was out there. Yeah. And sometimes I, you see the white kids with extra lessons and extra this and extra that, and you're mm. like, Mom, please, like, give, no. You know mm. what I mean? Like, I just would have loved to see a parent with access. So, basically, your dreams, drive, and talent were outrunning her budget. Oh, <laughs> there were times when my dreams and my work was helping her. So, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, my lifestyle, from an early, I was working since the age of nine. I was traveling the world from the age of nine years old. Yeah. So I was always yeah. working. But you knew that you yeah. weren't in full control of your money, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, now that I look back, I, I'm glad that I could have given back to her. Absolutely. Um, one of my favorite nations to just look at and say wow are uh, Japanese people mm. and as a child you travel to Japan what are some of the things you look back at that you learned in Japan or observed in Japan that have stayed with you for life it's funny you say that no one has ever asked me that question it's a great question um the beautiful thing about Japanese culture is I love Japanese culture yeah. hence I'm asking you I respect you yeah. not for you yeah. I respect you for me. Sure. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is it. Yeah. It's the same as me. I, I, I have a, a charity that I run. And people don't understand that it's okay to give back because it feels good. Yeah. Help others. Mm. Yes, for them. But because it, it feels like a man. And I love that. Mm. Mm. I love that. What else did you learn in Japan? That raw food tastes better. Yeah. And Japanese women don't like black men. Jeez. Yo, yo. <laughs> but oh. you, you were a child, though. Or are you talking as an adult? Or are you talking World Cup? Japan now? is the only place ever in the world that I didn't get one swipe on Tinder. Oh, wow. I got one swipe. It was a colored girl from Cape Town. Ho the, homesick. But the Japanese girls, not one swipe. When I was Because when I travel, I, I go on dating apps, you know what I mean? To meet people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah that's, I'm sticking to that. To meet people. That's your story. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you, and yeah. not one swipe. Not one Japanese lady saying, me want chocolate. Have you maybe tried to meet one on the street and said, uh, you know, me so horny, me love you long time? I don't think that's going to work. I, I, I think I'll end up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they definitely know that for. I'm not looking forward to going to a Japanese jail, no matter how big their penises are. <laughs> it's not still <stuff> violated. <laughs> so, as your star is rising, as this child with this talent, with this drive, uh, you're a ball of energy. How's Ma helping you manage that? Because it must still be managed. Yeah, my mother... My mother or, or your dad, for that matter. My mother always was about, you're great, but relax. Yeah. Remember one day, after the opening night of Lamers. Yeah. The clerk is there. Mandela couldn't be there, so I performed with Nelson Mandela a few weeks later. How old were you at the, at nine. the time? You're nine years. The clerk, Felicia Mabuza, all the greatest were there, like South African greats. Mm. I got home, and mother was like, listen, the dishes are waiting. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm a star, Ma. Uh, Ma, I just traveled the world. Yeah. Uh, she made me wash the dishes. Yeah. And that's the best lesson ever. Sure. She made me wash the dishes after one of the biggest nights of my life. They're not going to wash themselves. So, yeah. That, uh, and for me, I, she just kept me going. She, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, after losing my mom, I said, what now? Mm. I realized my only mission in life was to give my mother's approval. Mm. If you had said that to me uh, before my mother died, I would have said, ah, bullshit. Yeah. I thought, oh, I want my mother to be, make me proud. Mm. I've just been looking for my mother's approval yeah. my entire life. Mm. And now, success is, success is my, I, I, I succeed subconsciously. That's what I want to do continuously. Mm. But success doesn't feel the same without my mother here. I'm struggling, to, I'm struggling to celebrate in my success. I'm, I'm struggling to be able to go, oh, that was great. Like, for example, last night, I had an MC event, killed it. I just sneaked out. 
Mm. Because I don't give a fuck what you all say to me. Mm. I don't care that you think I'm great. Mm. I don't care that you think I'm amazing. Mm. I don't care. Like at the end of Woman King, um, working with Viola Davis, some of the greats, and I looked at it and I was like, oh, that was cool. Mm. My mother's not here. I don't mean shit. Yeah. But, bro. So your true north is gone, is what you're gone, saying. Gone, gone. Mm. Bro, I, I'll tell you this thing. I have never said this on air, but during Toronto, I flew there duty free, crying. On the airplane, crying. Land crying, red carpet next to Viola Davis, partying with Viola Davis, having a great time. On the dance floor at 4 a.m., I take uh, I take pre-workout because mm. I didn't want to sleep. Oh yes, 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 yes. It was about two to three weeks in, and in my in my dreams, my mother was dead. Mm. I didn't want to sleep. Mm. Get home, cry again, do it again. And that's what I was doing for weeks on end, just just not wanting to sleep. Running away. Running away from the pain, man. Crying every day. But it all means nothing. Mm. All means nothing without her. Mm. All means nothing. Are you superstitious? No, I don't um, believe anything. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in anything. Anything. Fuck all. Let me, let me tell you what I'm asking you. Um, because obviously Friday the 13th is not a nice date for you. Mm-hmm. Especially Friday the 13th. I lost in, my dad. In 2004. My, my, dad, my dad was in a car accident. He didn't die because of the yeah. car accident. No, no. Hence I'm asking you, do you have a relationship with the day Friday the 13th? No. Or it was just... No. That was the day. My birthday is the 18th of October. Don't care. 25th yeah. of December. Don't care. 1st yeah. of Jan. Don't care. Mm. Um, I don't believe why humans have to celebrate one day more than the other. I don't know why people need to be more special on one day than the other. Mm. Really don't care for any big date. But once my pullout game becomes weaker and I have a child, I'll have to be better at uh, celebrating special days. What is this with you being an overachiever, even with your pullout game? Hey. <laughs> This is why they invented the belly button. I'm joking. I'm joking. For it to be rained on. I'm joking. Condomize, guys. Condomize. Condomize. Oh, fuck. I'm not going to look at belly buttons the same. Uh, that's why they're there. Ever again. Like, what else are they going to use it for? <laughs> what else? It's not for a, it's not for a, a semen shot. Ah, that's what it is. You must condomize. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to like aim for the eye. No, I, I, don't I, I didn't do that. know you go for the belly button. No, no, no. Yeah. Condomize, guys. Condomize. Speaking of condoms, uh, you know, often there's a. Well, that's quite a transition. A, I don't know where you're going with this. Often there's a parallel made about how condoms are free, but sex is um, 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 is, a is a choice, mm. but pads are not. Mm. You're passionate about making sure that especially girls in rural areas, girls with nothing, have access to sanitary wear. Let's talk about that work that you're doing. Um, first of all, you know, I hear that example about condoms and pads all the time. Yeah. And I started with that narrative. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that condoms don't help one person. Mm. Condoms help two people. Sure. And you know what I mean? So it, it's always an example used, but it's, it's not the best. It's a condom that we all use. Uh, it's an example that we all use, but it, Condoms help two people. Mm. Now, 22 million women bleed every month, right? Eight of those 22 cannot afford sanitary pads. Sure. Four of those are in high schools mm. or in university. And I have a sanitary pad foundation called the Menstruation Foundation. It's sure. called the Menstruation Foundation because it was started by two men. Mm. So we call it the Menstruation Foundation. We've been asked, people have been begging us to change it. We refuse. But also, I love the fact that you call it that because it must be uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. It must be uncomfortable. It must be uncomfortable. Yeah. It's the same as when you see pad commercials. It, when girls are frolicking it, in the meadows and... Ah, ah. Or, the, or this blue liquid. Yeah, yeah. No. Menstruation, menstruation is not fun, guys. It's uh, not. And for me, I want to live in a country where the blood is not blue, it's red. Yes. The blood is only blue because DA, I'm joking. The blood is only blue. <laughs> the blood is only blue. Because, because the because DA it, didn't pull out. Yes. <laughs> well, it's only blue because they're trying to make men not feel uncomfortable. Yeah. All right? So for me... And that's a problem. It's a terrible problem. Yeah. Uh, for me, I spend... Our charity distributes... F- Half a million sanitary pads every single month. Jeez. 50,000 women. We have 100 uh, machines all over. I'm Hold on, up. how many pads a month? Half a million. Half a million. Half a mil. Jeez. Uh, we have 50,000 women on our books every single month. They sign a book, they get a coupon. I realize that women 
were stealing sanitary pads and selling them back to kids at schools. Mm. I repeat, women were stealing pads and selling them back to kids. So I came up with a sanitary pad vending machine yeah. that doesn't need ESCOM. ESCOM, fuck you. Um, you put in a coin, you're putting it down, mm. and we put these things, corporates, uh, you know, sponsor them, we put yeah. the corporates branding on them, we put them in different schools. At the moment, we're distributing about half a million. I'm opening that up my sanitary amazing. pad factory in mm. February or so. Because I know you've been building that, yeah. yes. February, uh, sanitary pad factory, naming it after my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll be able to distribute and sell sanitary pads at about three hundred and fifty for a pop. will be one of the cheapest sanitary pads on the African continent. That is revolutionary. Uh, called the Algoji pad, mm. uh, named after the... Uh, the, the army in West Africa, uh, all woman army that used oh, to fuck yes. up men. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So for me, my goal and mission, I don't want to be known for being a comedian and actor. For me, I'm going to be one of the guys to end period poverty in this country and in the African continent. That is amazing. Yeah. So that's um, my biggest. Goal uh, how do people get involved if they wanna? Get involved. Look up a menstruation foundation on uh, Instagram. Um, people are donating from five rand to 1.2 million rand. Uh, I promise you, you've heard it here. Mm. I will end period poverty in the Western Cape in the next year to year and a half. Mm. Uh, and if given the funds that I need, we'll be able to end period poverty in the next three to four years uh, in South Africa. So in, in essence, ending uh, period poverty is ensuring that every single person who can't afford a, now, a, a the, pad has access yes, without prob a problem. The problem with the government, yeah. and you know I hate the government, but the government is working out stats on 22 million women. Mm. Right? 22 women, women menstruate every month. Sure. But only of those 22 million, only 8 million can't afford it. Oh, yes. Right? Mm. So ending period poverty making sure that those 8 million have access to it, mm. right? Because me and you don't use choice condoms. Sure. And those are access for the, for the poor. Mm. But we're going is 8 million. But if we can't do 8 million, do 4 so kids can go to school. Yes. Young girls are missing uh, 3 to 4 to 5 days of school per month every single month, mm. right? Mm. But let me tell you another level, Fresh, that people don't talk about. So if a young girl's at home in her nighty, yeah. there are men who are seeing her in her nighty every single uh, so she becomes a target. She becomes a target for rape. Because she's not at school now. And child trafficking. Absolutely. So it's a big problem. So, so it's actually a multi-pronged problem Mul for that me, you can't go to school. When you say food, water, put sanitary pads up there, yeah. at the top there. It, you cannot think otherwise. Your accountant says you're a bit of a problem though. Yeah. Because you even refuse to take a salary uh, uh, in your pad business. Uh, uh, because you called my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you called my friends, you bastards. So why do you refuse to take a salary if it will make your books look nicer? No, man. <clears throat> you know when you when you own and you run a sanitary when a, a charity, you're allowed to take yeah. a, um, uh, an allowance. An allowance, yes, uh, legally. Sure. Um, but for me, I I'm not happy. Uh, it's not where it needs to be. Mm. Um, there are still young girls in this country missing school. So you'd rather that money is put back into rather the project? Rather, with the money that they could have paid me, there's, that could be another, um, another um, you know, 2,000, 3,000 sanitary pads. So I refuse. May I volunteer? Many I'll, people I'll, have wanted to volunteer. I'll, uh, I'll gladly I'm take sure, that I'm sure there are ladies out there who want me to <laughs> pay them in more weight. <laughs> ah, give me the money, I'll get more weight. More weight, more weight, more weight, more weight. <laughs> Oh, man. So earlier on, uh, you, you spoke about a friend of yours. Um, we have a message from him. Oh. Oh, her. Uh, everything she said is true. 
I wanted to play that right at the end, but you know the fact that we're talking about um, uh, your pullout game, amongst other things, <laughs> and that one day you'll be a father. I figured we must uh, play that uh, now. Tell us about Paki. Who is she? Um, what is she to you? I think Paki's the biggest problem. Why I don't think I want a girlfriend <laughs> anytime soon, or a, or a wife. Um, no. She's my best friend. Um, the person I talk to. Mm. The, my first good morning. My my good night. Um, she is a woman who I travel the world with. Mm. Uh, we share rooms uh, wherever we go, and she's my sister. Uh, actually, our, uh, uh, we have my, my mother's clan name is the same as her family. Okay. Mm. Um, nothing sexual, um, just literally my, my... Ever, 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 ever. Ever, 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 mm. ever. Um, and I think that's disgusting. Uh, <laughs> the, the thought of it. Um, absolutely which, disgusting. which one of you is the slowest here? Sis. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, and, and she makes me a better man. Yeah. Um, I, I literally, I'm flawed as fuck. Um, I'm sure there are women out there who would, mm -hmm. who, would, who, who would tell you stories about me and go, but this is not the guy I know. Yeah. Uh, and the mission for me is, is not to be a perfect man. The mission is to improve. Uh, and yeah, she really helps me. She's, she's this gigantic, I have a gig, you know, sometimes we all have women in different categories. Yeah. Right? And mm. it's, it's a good and a bad thing, but... You know, she's my sister, my best friend, my confidant, and the gigantic wife. Yes, you know yes, I mean? yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. And um, yeah, man, she, she really, when my mother died, she, when my mother died, I remember her dropping me outside my house. And she parked. I was like, where are you going? And she literally laid in the bed with me. Mm. And every couple of minutes when I woke up crying, I'd fall out the bed crying. Mm. And then she'd be there holding me. Mm. We'd both cry. She would cry more than me. Then I'd go to the TV room, cry. Then she's on me crying. Um, so for anything, we're always there for each other. And for me, I wish every man could have uh, a best friend of the se uh, of the different sex and the mm. different gender. I, I think it, it, it's it's life changing. Mm. Mm. You talk about being flawed, and often as men, we don't admit that we're flawed. Mm. Uh, you know, most men think we're all, you know, I'm an alpha. Even the guy with the biggest belly uh, wearing a gym pant and, and Crocs thinks he's a fucking alpha man. Those guys are the ones who usually make fun of me for my perfect body, the yeah. fat ones. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do we need to unlearn as men? Do you, you know, believe? Pff, I'll simplify it. Yeah. I wish I could treat every woman the way I treat my best friend. Mm. or my sisters or mm. my nieces mm. I think now we talk about the negative of putting women into categories um, the problem is that we put women in family blah, 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 and then when there's women who you're having sexual relationships with those get treated differently sure. I think we have to realize that a woman doesn't have to belong to someone to be a woman mm. the, the, when a woman gets raped we're the first people to go she's someone's mother mm. she's no when a, something happens to a man a human being no one says he's someone's dad no mm. bro it's just a person, so you're uh, absolutely just a person. Mm. Um, I have a lot to learn. I, I, I'm a better version than I was yesterday. Mm. Mm. Um, but definitely I've made mistakes. I've made mistakes and, um, I, I, you know, in the future, illiteracy will not be can you read and can you write. Mm. It will be can you learn and unlearn. Sure. We will judge people by learning and unlearning. Because mm. with AI, with all these things, if you can't read, you can just go, read this, and it will read it back to you. Sure. Write this, write it back to you. So for mm. being a literacy, no. The biggest thing for me and society, mm. well, can you learn and unlearn? Um, What's the biggest thing you've succeeded at unlearning? Oh, that's a big one. Yarr. I think I've learned that women are equal. Mm. I think it, when you're younger, you say these things. Yeah, but you, you know don't I mean? practice it necessarily. You don't practice it, and you don't practice oh. it in, your, in your words. So for me, first in rugby, guys, you're playing like girls. Uh, you will never hear me saying that now. Or in your head, yeah. if a woman engineer or mechanic yes. comes to yeah. you and wants to explain what's wrong with your, with that, your car. That's I've unlearned that. In your head, you're like, you take it, it's a double take. Yeah, yes. And even that in itself is problematic. Yeah. I've unlearned that. Yeah. Um... And I've learned that me having a penis isn't a, is not a superpower. It's not a superpower. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, bro, I'm, I'm 38. I've got a lot to learn. And, you know what I mean? I, no. I, no, actually, the most important thing I've unlearned mm. and learned mm. is that vulnerability is a superpower. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Vulnerability is my superpower. Were you watching us a couple of weeks ago? That's exactly what I was talking about. No. About how men, you know, the minute we realize that being able to be vulnerable mm. is actually a strength, a superpower. Fresh, I have done, I've been in Hollywood films, blockbuster films. I've been in some huge things. Yeah. I get stopped mm. for my vulnerability. Yes. The selfies are now for vulnerability. They're in, they're not for the work that I do anymore. Sure. They're for heels. And in the heels, it's the vulnerability of heels. Mm. In the pole dancing, it's the vulnerability of pole dancing. In the dra- you know what I mean? It's become my superpower. Mm. Yeah. You're, nobody gives a damn about the eight pack. Mm. Well, well, well yeah, yeah. within. But, but, but even my mother's death. Yeah. I think a lot of people resonated with how I shared it because mm. I shared it her when she was alive. I remember. Yeah. I remember during COVID, you went out of your way to protect her from COVID. Yeah. So, so for me, but let me tell you, my friend. Yeah. When my mother was lying there on the ground, the first thing I said is, "Why my mother on the ground?" And I kissed her, and I realized because of COVID, I kissed her less. Mm. I was trying to save her. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. How does she feel about how vigilant you were during the COVID times? I mean, you overreacting, and, 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 man. Hey man, you overreacting, man. <laughs> Come on, man, baby. Come on, he's a man. He's bring some Nando's, man. He, he don't worry, man. We wear a mask. Mm. And I won't lie, Paki and I were super spreaders. Yeah. Because we were traveling, we were working. Mm. So we would not, uh, we avoided our mothers. Mm. Uh, um, and that's the kind of loyalty that sometimes you pay the price for. But your family didn't, and that used to upset you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Christmas. I was like, hey, for tech. Hey, when I have a tech, when I have a power, when I. I must sit there mm. um, but there's a part of me that is happy that I didn't have to watch my mother deteriorate mm. Mm. my mother was too, too proud mm. and I think I would have distanced myself from her mm. to try to protect myself you once spoke about how even in your childhood living in the hood your mom made you realize that this is not life, mm. and this will not be life. We are bigger and better than this yeah. that's around us. Mm. Take us through that. Yeah, my mother, guys, I know I talk about my mother a lot, but my mother, even as I was living in the township, she used to be like, we're better than this. Mm. We can do better. Mm. We will do better, and I'm going to take us out of here. Mm. We were in Langa, living in Langa, and I was about eight years old, and she saw someone, uh, nine, seven, she saw, nine, no, I was eight, she saw someone from the, the shacks coming mm. to pour water in our, out of our tap. She was like, wow, we're living! We're living in G! We're getting out of here! Um, and we lived in Pylons. Mm. We couldn't afford to live in Pylons. Yeah. One of my friends only found out last year how much I struggled in high school. Yeah. Oh, I struggled, man. Mm. Struggled, 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 struggled. Tell us about that struggle in high school. Bro, I, I used to wear shoes that had holes in them. My mother would pay, buy me a pair of shoes in the beginning of the year. I wear it right through. Remember, I had a Reebok that I was so proud of. Remember, in the trick, someone won best dressed. Mm. And it hurt me so much. I was like, oh, if I had the money, I could win that. Yes. We really struggled, really, really did struggle. But my mother kept the house together people thought that we were fine i was the cool kid i was the prefect first team rugby mm. first team water polo water polo western province i did it all traveling the world but they thought we were fine we struggled uh, mm. but my mother was just the rock uh, who kept us together what did you eat at break time <laughs> you know i was the popular kid so kids gave me Gave me food. So you were sorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gave me food. I was always, Darren Benjamin would give me sandwiches. Andrew Pike would give me a drink. We all shared. And I, had, I would get five rand, which would be enough. And then mm. I would get five rand and I would buy like a pie and drink. Mm. Um, but my personality was my secret weapon. Uh, mm. It got me, you know, to get away with murder. But you're an introvert. Oh, yeah. I, people don't believe that. No, no. Hence, I'm going there. You're an introvert. But obviously... You're also a performer, so if you have to switch it on, you will. But how do you reconcile the two within your own head? It's, yeah, it's uh, difficult. Given how, as an introvert, often, I wa- sometimes leave me alone, I want to be in my own mm. thoughts. Or leave me alone, I want to read a book, or I want to watch something on TV. I want to be in my own space. But you also save. Mm. 
you are the same. It, it is a difficult, uh, difficult balance because I think the people in my life, I, I, for example, I, I went with my business partner to <laughs> to the World Cup. To the oh, yeah, you guys were trending. Yeah, and he, to, I, I, I actually, I, I, he, I said I need to go for a walk, yeah. and he said to me, "Can I come with, or you want to be alone?" Yeah. So he gets it. And I said I have to be alone, and I could see him turn around to tell the group, he's like, "Don't worry." I know, I know. He seems like an extrovert. But he's an introvert. Yeah. You gotta, le- you gotta leave him. Mm. And I, I shared a room with him for the first night, and I think he realized that this isn't me, this isn't him. Yeah. Um, I'm just to myself. I really am to myself, and I have conversations inside my head. And that's why sometimes I can be dickish. For example, when I'm emceeing, I, I, I get there and I try to organize everything to make sure that it works perfectly, mm. so I'd have to talk to you less. Sure. We want the thing to work. Mm. Um, and I think I have to give a piece of myself every time I go out into the world. Mm. You know what I mean? And sometimes, like even yesterday during the great, I had to leave. So I said to my best friend, I've taken enough pictures. Yeah. I've had enough conversations. Mm. Um, so being an introvert, I, I, don't, I don't need people's energies to build me. Yes. I just need to be in my own space. Mm. And I think it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm single for as long as I have been and, and why I, I do struggle with relationships and that kind of stuff. It's just because I'm just so into my own head. Mm. Um, and another thing with my mother, I think that the process of her death has been really a singular fight. Mm. Grief is not a, a team sport. Mm. Mm. So you're saying one of the reasons, apart from the fact that you have a you know a sick work ethic, one of the reasons you strive for perfection is so that you can get it done now, out the way, <laughs> and back to your space. Yeah, I think. Perfection, I'll never reach. Yeah. But what I know is that the the civisms of perfection mm. to the outside world look yeah. amazing. Sure. But I go, I had a horrible time. Yeah. It was terrible. I hate it. It's that. a it's a horrible feeling. But it's the worst feeling in the world. Like yesterday, mm. the whole day I was in a mood. I was sleeping because I knew the gig was going to be difficult. Yeah. And I knew I would have to save it with civisms. Oh yes. You know what I mean? And the world looks at civisms and goes, wow. Like I said to Donovan Goliath all the time, I said, Don, yeah. you are so talented that the world can't see how difficult your talent is. Oh, yes. Because you, you Donovan it. You make it seem easy. Just like Jason. Yes. You guys just, yeah. you, you make it look so easy that mm. the world can't go, wow, you're incredible. Mm. Well, like, we lived in the time of Michael Jackson, guys. Mm. The world is like, wow. And you're like, oh, it's just Michael, you know. Mm. Um, no, man, I, and I think one day I'll die alone. Mm. I think one day I will die alone. And I think I'll be quite 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 content in that Mm. but my definition of hell is me being on my deathbed Mm. and then meeting the man that i could have become oh yes that's my definition of hell and we all owe ourselves not to go through that yes but my yeah yeah. but i want to meet the man the man who comes to meet me must be the man who's laying down oh yes and my for me my definition of absolute failure was would be if i don't ever have a child Mm. And and for me, I want to be a girl dad. Mm. Um, I will adopt if if I find out that the penis is not working. Mm. And my definition of failure is not having a child. For my definition of failure, some sure. people's definition of failure is not being in a relationship. Something else, yes. But for me, I want to co-parent with someone and I want to have a child. So you are on your deathbed. There's a minute left. Mm. What do you think is going through your head in that last minute, based on how you've lived your life so far? Brute. If, if, the, if the movies are right, it that, on that your life is flashing. It happened on you. Sunday. Tell us about it. I was, I was on my motorbike. Yeah. Very fast. Mm. Uh, not very fast, but reasonable speed. And the lady cut over in front of me. Mm. And the first thing I thought of, here it goes. Mm. And I was like, we've lived a good one. I'm going to trend on Twitter for a couple of days. And people will hate me or say what they hated about me. Mm. People will share my nudes if I've got nudes out there, my sex tapes. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to happen. And I don't fear death. Mm. Lived a great life. If I walk out of this door and I die right there, mm. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. So I wouldn't need to go to your laptop and delete the code. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. If I do die, my best friend knows okay. that this thing, can you see how close it is? You see this thing? <laughs> delete. <laughs> Cancel. Ban. iCloud. Delete. So Paki has access. Okay, so, she, so, so she has access she to has everything. She has access to my iCloud. She has access. She knows. Yeah. But actually, when, when, as soon as I was in the, in the crash, I literally took out my phone and I, she was my first call. Yeah. And if I had gone, I'm de- 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 
She, she knows what to do. Clear. <laughs> Dude, that, that shit happened to a friend of ours passed away. Oh, wow. I think it was the same year your dad passed away, 2004. And so we were b a bunch of friends. And I remember she calls me after a friend passes away. And she's like, fuck, are you in town? Because I'm out of town. The family are on the way to her place. Mm. Somebody needs to go hide her box of toys. Mm. Because the family see it, yeah. fuck. Ah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you need to have friends yeah, like that I, I who know what to hide, mm. what to burn when you go. Guys, <laughs> let me tell you one thing. I think people use the F word yeah. too often. Sure. They're not your friends. Mm. They're your colleagues. Sure. They're not your friends. They're your acquaintances. They're not your friends. You say hi to them every once in a while. Mm. Not everyone is your friend. Sure. If I call you my friend, you're a diehard. Mm. And unfortunately for me, I'm so loyal that my expectations of friends is quite high. Mm. The pressure is high. Mm. Like Musi knows, if he goes, ah, Seth, where are you? I need to go fetch my kid from, from, from um, thingy, um, uh, whatever, from, from soccer. He knows that I'll drop everything to fetch a kid at, to, at soccer. Yeah. And vice versa. That's a friend. Musi, I need to go get a, 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 a what's it called, a, a visa for um, France. 22 hours later, I have my visa for France. Yeah. But he knows I'll do the same for him. Pucky does the, the same, you know what mm. I mean? Mm. I think we use the word friends too often. We throw it around willy-nilly. Loosely. Well, me. My friend, mm, Alex, mm, mm. in America, I'm in his will. It says, if I die, Siv will take my son back to South Africa. Mm. That's the kind of friendships. I, and it's not even a debate. Mm. For me, if you fuck with my friends, you fuck with me. Mm. If you fuck with my friends, you die. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I live by it. And I think a lot of people use the word, so, so the, like we're at primary school, friend, friend. For Jack, he's not your friend, he's your colleague. But there's also something about you, though, that you will take abuse that you will never, ever allow to be administered on a oh, friend never. of yours. Oh, never. Uh, talk to us about that. Listen, yeah, let me tell you something. My yeah. name is Siv Ngesi. Yeah. I search for my name on Twitter every day because yeah. I want to make sure that none of the hate that you motherfuckers give me that I miss. Mm. I want to make sure that if you say something, I want to retweet it. And someone says, why don't you block them? I don't want to block them. They need mm. to see how great I am every day. Mm. They need to see when I travel around the world. They need to see when I make a lot of money. I will never block anyone. Sure. You need to see how great I am. Mm. If everyone loves you, you're doing fuck all with your life. Mm. I want them to see. Mm. I want them to know that I'm great. Mm. But don't fuck with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> You'll take a bullet. <laughs> ah, let me tell you something. Guys, Paki, let me tell you. Sometimes I walk on Paki and a beggar will come. And I'm like, hey, hey, for check. Uh, I'm mm. ready. Mm. Um, I'm willing to die for a friend. I mm. I'll take a bullet for a friend. And for me, at my funeral, don't lie about me. Yeah. Don't you lie about me. Don't just say the good things about me. Mm. You tell them how I was. You sure. tell them the kind of person that I was. Um, and for me, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm consistent and accountable. Um, sure. And I love my friends. But fresh, on the same hand, if I see a man hitting a woman outside, I will stop this thing and I'm going to go hurt someone. You're going to be late for your flight. Oh, I've got a flight, yeah. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to yeah. wrap up. We're going to wrap up fast. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, you, you, you are an activist and feminist at a level. Ah, wait. Hold on. Yeah. I don't like the word feminist and I don't like the activist. I think we as people yeah. should fight injustices. Yes. We don't need ladies. All of them. All of them. All, actually, I don't know. I don't think everyone needs to fight every fight. Yeah. Like for me, I don't give a fuck about animals, mm. right? Mm. I prefer humans. Sure. But I don't want to see people abusing animals. Yes, right? yes, yes. I call myself, I fight against injustices. Mm. I don't think I deserve feminists or active. I think I fight against injustices no mm. matter what they are. You were accused of sexual harassment. Ah. But take us through that period in your life. Before I begin, I forgive her. Yeah. I forgive her lies. She thought that the particular thing that she did was not going to come out. Mm. But luckily enough, I had three friends at the table. Yeah. There was drinking. Yeah. Um, she, she put out something at the table. And then the next morning, my friends, I repeat, friends, five red Indians eating nuts downstairs. That's how you spell friends if you're a kid and you don't know. Mm. And they were like, what did you say about Siv? Yeah. Right? Um, I repeat, I forgive her. Mm. Um, she accused me of something I did not do. Sure. Uh, I still actually uh, uh, met up. I saw her once. Um, and she accused me of something that I did not do. Mm. Um, and I, I've seen a lot of people being accused of things. Mm. I've seen some 
deal with it in ways that I feel like is right and some deal with it in ways that are wrong. Um, I forgive her. Mm. Uh, I forgive her. Uh, it angered me at the time. I understand the anger, uh, but I forgive her. Mm. Uh, and I, she was wrong uh, and she lied. Uh, I don't know why she did it. Mm. Uh, one day I would love to have a conversation with her because we have friends in common. Um, and she, she accused me of many things, stalking, um, sexual harassment, a lot of things. Um, and I forgive her. Mm. Um, and I forgive her. And um, I forgive her. In terms of the work, well, not even the work, just you not sitting back when the injustice is happening, mm -hmm. especially when men beat on women. Mm -hmm. You know, you've, you are known to out men mm -hmm. that beat up women yeah. or are abusive towards mm -hmm. women. Um, you know, uh, you've posted pictures of yeah. men even uh, in your quest to say, fuck this shit, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit back and, and, and do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But one of the dudes that you posted uh, killed himself. Oh. Let's talk about that. I feel nothing. Yeah. Um, first of all, he abused many women in yeah. his life. Mm. Um, secondly, he had abused a very close friend of mine. Sure. Uh, and thirdly, people continuously defended him. Yeah. And technically, if it's true that he's dead, mm. um, people don't believe he's dead. He's got a, quite a connected family. Mm. Um, he would have killed himself before he saw my post. Um, ah, okay. Uh, but if he had, and I was the reason for him killing himself, mm. I feel nothing. Mm. Uh, I, I don't feel anything. Um, for me, he should have been able to be accountable to his actions. Sure. Um, he abused a friend of mine. He abused many people that I know, uh, and I feel nothing. Do you ever get threatened with either harm or death? Oh yeah, I get threatened all the time. Yeah. I get threatened all the time. Um, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Mm. Uh, if I were attacked uh, for my rights and views. Every man that I've ever outed mm. has threatened legal action, but they've done nothing. Mm. Um, and every has threatened physical action, and they've done nothing. Mm. Um, so men who attack women are cowards. Mm. They would never mm. come here. Yeah. <laughs> because this is work. They'll never fuck around and find out. I were here. I <laughs> said it slow. said it slow. Even in heels. Once, on the, once a, a, a guy on Twitter actually threatened me, and he was like, me too at Monte Casino? I said, listen here, yeah. I will come and fight you. Yeah. I'm just going to wear a gum guard. That's sure. all. Sure, yeah. Because, you know, I, the teeth. Yeah, ah. yeah. Um, for me, guys, gone are the day. For me, I miss the days when someone fucked with you and you fuck each other up. Yeah. I miss the days when you can meet face to face yeah. and really have a punch up. I miss yeah. that. Mm. But now you have to call each other names. Like, ah, man, please. It's like man. dogs barking in jail. Nah, man, just take it to the Nah, you call shit, I call shit, let's fight. Mm. Um, mm. And, and for me, that is... I'm toxic. That's a toxic trait of mine. Mm. It's a toxic trait. I'm not saying, because someone's going to cut me talking about being a man. And then, Yes, it's a toxic trait of mm. mine. I know that men speak in violence and it's a problem. Mm. And I speak fluent violence mm. and that's a problem. Mm. But I don't believe violence is always entirely wrong. Mm. I think we have a very violent society, but sometimes violence... How else are you going to take out the violence? The violence. Sometimes we need violence yeah. to take out violence. Mm. Um, I know that if you listen to this and you... Okay, call me out, yes, call me out, but put this piece in. I understand that what I said is toxic. Sure. But I think this bit of toxicity is needed. Because mm. otherwise, like, like you're saying, how else are you uh, going to... How am I going to defend my people? Mm. Uh. A keyboard can't defend them. Oh, I, 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 it, it, And the police. Uh, the, listen here. South African police are so bad, you could leave a semen sample, a blood sample, your ID, and a big fuck you video, and they still won't find you. They're like, ah, we are busy working through the evidence. We are trying to see if, if we can... Ay! Simin! Ikazi! The address! You can't! Ah! You know, they're like... <laughs> and they're still like, we're not sure where he is. It's going to take three months to find out. I'm imagining a guy scormling all over his, his own fucking blood. <laughs> <laughs> Got a message for you here. Yeah.
that's uh, Musi Maimani. I'm filthy rich. I'm filthy rich. Uh, running for president next year. I'm filthy rich. When it comes to friends, yeah. filthy rich. Filthy rich. Are you voting for Musi next year? Musi Maimani is the only person I trust. Yeah. Ask yourself, would you trust any other party with your money? I trust him. I trust him and I love him. Uh, yeah. And I look forward to um, doing life with all these people. I, His kids love you. Oh, man, the, the greatest. Uh, he's got three kids. One yeah. is late Lamaki, little, yeah. little three-year-old, yeah. little diva. He always says, this is your kid, this one. Little diva. What, what, what happened three years ago? It is a, it is a, it is a birthday, uh, it was a birthday uh, yesterday. So, Musi... Pulled out of the DA and forgot to pull out at home. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Look, aye. My friend, yeah, my friend Musi was, was busy. But he asked, can I, can I tell you, can I tell you? When Musi found out his wife was pregnant, he called me. He was like, I'm going to meet you now. I'm going to meet you now. We met him. We said, my wife's pregnant. I'm like, ah, I laughed. Ah. It's, that, it's the COVID sex, my man. <laughs> so, no, I'm, uh, I'm really blessed with some amazing friends and yeah. family. Uh, please, um, get him Musi on the show. He would love to be here. I'll get him on. No, no, we've been we've been chatting. So good man, he's good he, man. he's gonna be on the show. Good man, good man. Yes, yeah, sir. So what's what's next for Siv? I'm producing a couple of TV shows, yeah. a couple of films, international, local next year. Um, I got two films coming out. One, something on Netflix coming out this year. Something on Amazon coming out uh, this year, December. A, a show for Netflix. A show for Amazon. Uh, a film this year, and I'm producing four, one film, two films. One t and two series uh, next year. Something big coming out. Um, I'm sick and tired of um, having to uh, audition. Um, I'm going to audition myself. I'm going to put myself in the film. I'm going to be part of it. I'm producing Civil is the lead. Yeah. So, yeah. Why, why the hell not? Yeah, I'm sick and tired, man. Tom Cruise does it. Yeah. It's time. A taller version, a darker version. Absolutely. Are you also going to reproduce it anytime soon? Because I know you're trying to. You want to eventually. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to have a kid soon. I want to yeah. have a kid soon. Uh, the potential of having a kid coming out look like my mother. Oh, man. It's a dream. <laughs> it's a dream. I can only imagine. A kid come out looking just like my mother. Fat, cute, and just lovable. And speaking like your mother. Yeah! And, 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 and a snob like he your daddy! mother. Daddy! <laughs> Share this milk. Share this poop with this person, please. <laughs> Dude, I'm being shouted at because you're going to miss your flight. Yeah. But listen, man, thank you so much for agreeing mm. to come through. Yeah, man. I think you are the perfect example and probably only a handful of people in our industry that can do whatever the hell they want mm. because they are willing to work hard for it. They've got the tenacity they've got the discipline and because mom says I could and, I, and 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 there aren't many people in this industry like that a lot of people in this industry get by just be mediocre yeah. but you are always top of your own game you could do a one-man show and outdo yourself because you hold yourself to that standard next year it comes out it's called mommy's boy a new one-man show I rest my, my case but the point I'm trying to make here is all of us owe that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to be the 500% version of yourself? Because this man is. Are you willing to fail? I'm willing to fail, Fresh. Yeah. I'm willing to fail so hard. I'm willing to lose it all. Yeah. Over and over again. Mm. I will outwork you. Mm. I will not be more inspirational than you. I'll be more disciplined than you. Sure. Thank you so much. I grew up absolutely, absolutely, absolutely the biggest fa uh, f uh, fan of yours. I said to, uh, I said to, to Mpaki this morning, can you believe that I chat to Fresh on WhatsApp and I'm going to have him. And I was like, I grew up watching this man and listening to him. So thanks so much for having me. Um, and I look forward to hearing the show. And thank you so much. Can I tell you one last thing I appreciate about you? When myself and Euphonic were dealing with our false accusations from that woman, I mean, me and you are not close, you know, but there's a mutual respect. You know that you're one of less than 10 people who picked up the phone and said, what's going on here? Yeah, okay. Remember, I didn't say, I didn't call you and say, I back you, you're innocent. No, Chomps. You, you I said, what is you, going you were on? Less than 10 people from my industry a lot of whom I've made into millionaires, literally. And I've, been, I've, I've, I've had no hand in your career. You picked up the phone and you said to me, what the fuck is going on here? And then I remember, and I you, pi you, picked and it I, up, you picked it up in one ring. It went, ring! <laughs> you were like... 
No, because the phone was ringing the whole day. So I was ready for the next call. <laughs> no, I, I, remember, I remember. I asked you what the fuck is going on. And I appreciate that, dude. I've never told you, but I appreciate it because from the people I expected it from, the call never came. And the call has never come to this day. So I appreciate you. I love you. And I wish you... Just fuck, keep going, dude. And may, I, may you walk in higher heels, dance on <laughs> taller poles, and make even bigger movies, bro. My biggest wish for myself is to heal. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to heal. Yeah. I just want to heal, uh, and I just want to change more lives. And make Ma proud. I just want a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. I said it here for the first time. Yeah. I'm going to win a Nobel Peace Prize in the next few years. For ending period, period po I'll poverty end, on I'll the end continent. Period poverty. On the so continent. I'm, I'm ending it on the continent. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Siv Ngezi is about to leave the building. Catch a flight. Get out of here. Yo, hey. Can you hear me? You listening? WAW. What a week. What a week. Week. Our second guest is in the building. Hashtag legend. There's been a range of emotions and reactions when watching the Springboks play their matches at the Rugby World Cup. However, there's been a different kind of amazement experienced by many viewers when listening to one of South Africa's commentators, a white um, speaking Setswana. We're pleased to have the subject of that disbelief in studio with us. So please give a warm welcome to Renir Rampuch Animunsu Swart. Dumel. How are you, Om? Yeah, I'm very good. It's, yes, sir. Is, uh, we're looking forward to the to the big final. Yes, sir. So there's there's some some expectations for South Africa. Yes, sir. So then it goes good. And rugby, South Africa's rugby is doing well. So then the feelings are good. Um Renier is in an elevator. A five-year-old walks in and says, Um Renier, Um Renier, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? How would you explain what you do to a five-year-old? Uh, firstly, my, my, I've, I've, I've got such a lot of jobs. Yes, sir. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, yes, I'm a commentator when it comes to rugby. Okay. Uh, I'm a commentator on, on, on Motsuiding FM okay. in Sitsuana. Uh, then I'm a farmer. Uh, yes, sir. Can I homoke kissing where K Kimu di Mong Que meets? A homo homoke kumo. Homoke homo has a fellow kumo. Kimu di Kimu di Mong Que meets. Is Paso Pavela homo or Reska na homoyak or poking. A homoya poking in a lone sour to the league. Every year on such a so Kesanse Kele. Kesanse kile kile muli birui. Erra. Kako le takori lele ngwe ke 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 tsa feni chara nyana. Erra. Ya kena le factory nyana inyana ene ki dira. Erra. So di lo tse tse di inti zeki di edi tse infan sala ke tsa mo kote. Erra. Kako le ne kile ne kile kaku ano. Erra. Ke bereka as a journalist and 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 the managerial side on the SABC. Yes, sir. So, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. Yes, I'm going to go to the hospital. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Radio, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Television, yes, sir. 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 So, you are from Zerast? Yeah, I'm actually from Groot Mariko. You're from Groot Mariko, but you went to Zerast. For school? No, I went to Swatrachan. I went to Zerist one year. Ah. Uh, only one year in Zerist. Okay. And that, that was, well, 1972, somewhere there. Yes, sir. Because it was the only school in South Africa that had Swana as a subject. And at the time? At the time. Oh, wow. And and uh, the white school. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This yes. Way. And that specific year, the guy who was, who was teaching Swana at the school was was actually taken away to Poch University as a lecturer. Ah, uh, yes. So then Swana went down. And then I went back to, to Swatrachans to Rodeo and High. Yes, sir. So I finished my matric in Swatrachans. So Setswana is actually your first language, right? I can say that. I can say that, although I'm Afrikaans. Yes. Uh, the way I was raised, I was raised in both languages. Yes, sir. My mother could speak a little bit of Setswana, mm. but I was raised by... 
Mamani. Yes, uh, your auntie. Uh, yeah, I auntie. called her Mamani. Yes. Uh, she was Mama Sama Shaban. Yes. And her family. Mm. And I've spent more time as a toddler mm. with her than with my mother because my mother had to work. Why do you think it is that white people in rural areas almost make more in a, of an effort to be a part of the community than in the suburbs. So for instance, you go to a place like Zirast and you'll hear white people speak in Setswana. It's, it's, it's not unusual. You go to a Khrut Mariko, a Swat Rachens, a Derby, and, and, and white people speak Setswana because that's the language they speak. You go to Venda, uh, white people are speaking Chivenda. But in the urban areas, it's almost like, I don't know if it's people don't care or they're not in touch or they don't see the need. I, th I think they don't know the need uh, in the in the urban areas. Yes, and and you are living past each other in the urban in, mm. in the urban areas. Yes, we are we are connected in the in the in in our rural areas. Mm. I mean, you 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 you're right. A lot of people, even if they can speak a little bit of of the lingo in the area, like in northwest, it's it's Afrikaans, English, and Sotswana. Or yes. put it the other way around, Sotswana, yeah. Afrikaans, mm. and English, and and most of the people try. Uh, even the kids. And the other thing is how they grew, grow up on the farms. Oh, yes. What's your friends? Mm. Who are your friends? Yes. In town, yeah, everything is Englishized. It's Absolutely. all the Queen's language. Mm. Uh, in, in, in our rural areas, it's still Setswana and Afrikaans. I couldn't speak English. Mm. When I wrote matric, I mean, I wrote matric, yes, on the book. Uh, but my English was definitely not good. Yes, sir. I had to come and to, to, to perfect it or try mm. and perfect it when I came to Joburg to come and work as a journalist. Mm, then I had mm. to do it. Yes, sir. So, so in, in, in the rural areas, the, the, the white guys are still, it's just a pity that there are too many people who don't know the value of speaking another language. Or speaking. African language. Yes. The value of that is immense. Mm, mm. Uh, I always say to people, I say, one of the wise words of President Mandela yes. was that if you speak to somebody, and you just speak to him, mm. it, you, he can hear you. Mm. But if you speak in his mother tongue, mm. you speak to his heart, and he not only hears you, but his heart you speak also comes to, to you. Yeah, you speak to him, not at him. You don't, yeah, you don't speak at him. Mm. Speak him. Mm. Because I remember um, as a child, so my, my dad was, was a farmer before he retired to, to his home village. And a lot of, especially the bulls we bought, we bought from farms in the Northwest. Yeah. So it was always fascinating that all of these farmers were fluent in Setswana. But this is like in the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Every farmer that we did business with, we spoke to in Setswana. It was never in English. Even their kids, fluent in Setswana. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's how it was in the Northwest. And it's still, yeah. I'm not saying was, it's still in the Northwest. There's a lot of, lot of white people that can speak Setswana. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's why... Uh, I, I say to people, it, it is unique. Yes, what I do mm. in, in broadcasting in Setswana, there's a different the difference between the lingo to spoken and the broadcast language. Oh yes, uh, it is a little bit unique, but it's I don't I don't put myself on a pedestal because of this. Mm. You you must remember what I what I say. What I do, there are millions of African people yeah. who are talking Afrikaans or English who are broadcasting. In English, and then we don't say Mokete is now this black guy. It's not a big deal. It. It's not a big deal. Yes. So with me as well, I, that's why I say I don't want to to try and be better than what I am. Uh, I say yes. I I, I created words in Setswana in order to to flow with the rugby, but it's not that you are on a pedestal. I, I was going to say so, doing uh, um, rugby commentary for Motswedeing in Setswana. How have you had to either improve your language or adjust your language or even make words up just so that things flow in the commentary? Yeah, we had to make up uh, names for certain things happening in rugby. Like, like what, for instance? Uh, like a scrum. Yeah. Everybody says scrum. Afrikaans say scrum. English say scrum. What yeah. does it actually mean? Yeah. Now, the, 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 the main thing what, is, what makes Setswana so nice is it's an explit it's a language that explains. It's rich. It's rich. Yeah. So we came up with the word lesakana langkope. 
Ah, that's a scrum. That's a scrum. A that, small little crawl. That's an epic, epic description of a scrum. Description. A small crawl where we bend down and we ask for something. And oh, wow. wow. You go yes. on your knees to beg for something. Yes. So it kills Sakan. Langkope. Oh, wow. So if we broadcast quickly. My mind is. Is, <laughs> it's sakana langkope. So you get sakana langkope, but the real meaning is le sakana langkope. Yes. The second word that we created was for a conversion. Yes. Conversion means that you are converting points to become more. Oh, yes. Rona beri bitare ke taliletsu. Taliletsu. O tlatsa faifi. To augment. To augment. O tlatsa faifi. Yes. We dira seve. Oh, wow. So wa taliletsu. Wa taliletsu. So and and the third word that that we work is kop. Okay. Okay. For a knock on. For a knock on. But has it fell a kop? Yes. It depends on where kop comes from. Yes. How kop is it? Is it where it comes from? Where kop fell? Yes. Where kop? Maybe also where kap, where it's hard to see. Yes. 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 You didn't quite catch it right. Because, your, your, because your fingers or your fingertips were wet. Your nails were wet. Yes. <laughs> so that that, that that so that's that kind of it's it's and in radio it's it's so nice and and to use this beautiful language. Yes. In order to explain these things, so that that makes radio so nice. People wondered what why what do I mean when I when I say Kwaha Smith. Yes. I gave him the name in Sotswana yeah. in broadcasting of Tonkana Yanach. Yes. A wild horse. Not actually the a white zebra. horse. The zebra. Yes. Because a zebra in, in, in Afrikaans is a kwacha. Yes. And his name is kwacha. Oh, yes. So when the old Botswana called it Tonkana Yanach. Mm, mm. So that's why we call him Tonkana Yanach. Oh, wow. Faf de Tlerk being a short, cocky guy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the small the, the the small rooster. The small rooster. Yes. But we, which is so and and we know they are all usually bankani. In fact the small roosters are always the ones that got this gears and like domkrach. Eh? Domkrach in there. Yeah. And and so it's those kind of things that you enrich the broadcast with. Yes. That people at the end of the day uh, like. They appreciate and it. And appreciate, they appreciate that the you, effort. That, that you, you try and explain more. Yes. Uh, I used to train a lot of commentators mm. uh, before. And one thing that I was learned from the beginning by a man, Um Dan Sitsedi. You will oh, remember yes, Dan, Dan yes. I worked a lot with Um Dan Sitsedi as a youngster. Yeah. And um, Dan actually was the first guy to give me a mic. Oh, yes. Uh, but he used to say, Oh, yes. They are Everyone is blind. blind. No, no, but literally anyone listening to the radio might as well be blind. Might as well be blind. Yes. So you have to explain what is going on on the field. Theater don't of the become, mind. Don't become too, too as if you the only one who knows the game. Those people know the game. Yes. So don't become too clever. Yes. But explain what is going on. Mm. And that's a quality of a commentator, of a good commentator. Surely it's a superpower then to be able to do that. Because not all of us, yes, you know, a, a million of us could speak Setswana, um, and from that million, a hundred love rugby. But to be able to take it and do with it that which you do, not everyone can do that. Yeah, it's, as, it's, a, it's a special skill. I think it's a skill. I think it's, it's experience. Yeah. It, it came through years of experience. Yeah. That, that, yeah uh, you didn't wake up like this. <laughs> no, I didn't wake up like this. I also went through the hardships of trying to broadcast. Yes, sir. Trying to do commentary. I was thrown into the deep end. Yes. Uh, with different sporting codes. Sure. So I started with soccer. Mm. I did soccer and... Uh, or soccer commentary. Soccer commentary. Okay. But that was not... I didn't do a lot of it, but I, I started with that. That's mm. where the love for, for the game actually, or, or for broadcasting of the microphone actually started. Then we did cricket, I did tennis, I loved boxing. Myself and Aubrey Mutlo, we did quite a lot of boxing oh, together. Oh wow, yes sir. And, and boxing, Mabole, is a nice thing to broadcast. Which, which, which boxing, which bout still sticks out for you that you commentated in Setswana? Uh, 
uh, there's not one really sticking yeah. up, but uh, but the ones I loved was maybe Jake Matlala's fights. Oh, yes. We did a few of them. Yes. Um, so th those were, were, were we. I, I didn't commentate at the fight of Harry Kutsia and who was it? Big John Tate. Uh, Big John Tate in, yes. in, 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 in Sun City. In Sun City. I was, I I was, I was a child, but I remember that fight. I remember the hype around that fight. Yeah. And it was incredible. We even had a song about it um, as kids. Um, 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 there was a game we used to play. What was it? Uh, Big John Tate, Bamorobile, Upside Down, Oh Fish, Fish, or something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I was, I was, I was ringside. Were you but there? I, I was there, but I wasn't, I wasn't a, a commentator at that stage. I did yes. technical stuff. Oh yes. I did yes, technical yes. work for the SBC. So you, 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 you were still uh, um, a platter spieler. Yes. <laughs> a web <vip> drucker. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. so when the novelty wears off for people, when they realize that, oh, yes, he's a white dude. Yes, he speaks Tswana. Oh, flip, he does commentary. Then do they settle in and just respect you as, he's a commentator and that's what it is? I'm sure it will happen. I'm yeah. sure it will be. Uh, because we, because we love novelty for some reason. Yeah, I, I'm sure it will, it, will, it will be like that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm really... I'm honored yeah. to, to, to be honored by listeners, and especially on the Tswana side. You know, when I started doing commentary in Tswana, people said to me, you are wasting your time. There are no Tswana listeners listening to rugby yeah. because there's no interest in rugby. Mm. And one of my wishes, and I, I know I did this after the 1995 World Cup, mm. the World Cup final here in, at, at, at Ellis Park. Yes, sir. I said, I hope one day before I die, mm. that I will see a Motswana Springbok. Oh, yes. That'll be awesome. And it happened. Yes. It happened with Oxen Che. Yeah, absolutely. It happened a with Siabelo Sinatra. Exactly. And those are, the, are guys who in 95 listened on radio. They heard you. They heard us on radio. It wasn't just me. Yes, yes, yes. But, yes. but those first broadcasts that we did. Yes. And, and one of my wishes comes true, came to so uh, it's it's um, it's and today you will see the Sutu speaking i'm not so, just talking to mm. the Sutu speaking nations of south africa yes sir. are listening to our rugby commentary either in in on lisedi on mutreding or, or on tobel mm. I'm, mm. I'm doing um, analyzing on both on all three stations yes sir but you can see that how the questions it became better questions. Mm. The education went mm. through mm. to the rugby. In the beginning, people would ask you a question like, "Why is the ball not round like, yes, a, yes. like a soccer ball?" Yeah. Now it's it's more difficult. Now questions. it's technical. It's technical. Yes. Now Why do they put the, the ball in skew in the scrum? That's a wrong rule. Yes. Those kind of things that are now coming up. So people are interested in the game. People are behind South Africa, and so it makes it nice. It, yes, sir. It, there's an accomplishment that, that you made. S speaking of, you know, your, your wish uh, in 95 being that you hope that, you know, before the good Lord summons you, you'd see at least one uh, uh, Motswana Springbok. How was Ox last week? Oh. <laughs> Motswana Waiets. Motswana Waiets. Mokhaiets. Yo. Yo, Tota, uh, nah. he, he was the Sinatra that day. <laughs> he was the Sinatra. Except for that, Sinatra, nee, let's help. Yes. He could move. Exactly. He was Maro a boy. But one day, he was a man. He was a boy. He was a man. He was a boy. He was a boy. He was a boy. And they just didn't know what to do with him. I mean, he, yes. was, he was just a, a wonderful. And I see now that he's again on the bench. Yeah. But he, his big friend is joining him. Yes. In uh, Trebenyaka. Yes, yes. He's yes, on the bench for this week. Yeah. So the All Blacks know that something's coming towards them. I was going to say, what, what, are, what are your views on the so called bomb squad? And, 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 and why must they always be brought in to rescue? Why can't they come on and just make a point from the get go? It's modern rugby. Yeah. Modern rugby, old time rugby, you had 15 players that played against 15 players. Yeah. If there was an injury, there would have been a substitute. Yeah. Modern rugby is you've got a bench that's just part as part. It's a strategy. As the, as the, it's a strategy. Yes. I see we're starting with a 7-1 again. Yeah. On, on, on this coming on weekend. On Saturday, yes. On Saturday. 
which is a, a bit strange. Mm. But if you look at uh, somebody like Kwaka Smith, who could go and play on the wing, yeah. it's not really, we, we've got the guys to do a 7-1. Mm. Uh, other teams don't have the ability to do a 7-1. I mm. think, I'm sure they would like. Uh, but the bomb squad is, they call it the bomb squad just because Rossi actually made it fashionable. Yes, yes, yes. But in the past, it was, it was your substitutes and when you put your substitutes mm. on. So the, the win is critical. The win is critical. Yeah. Because w w once you get fresh legs on mm. at a specific crit cr critical time, yes. it, it works very well. If you take it to, uh, when, when we played England, mm. they, they tip, kept Dan Cole on. And dip, Dan Cole is a walking penalty in yeah. the scrum. Yeah. 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 But Kitsov couldn't manage him. Mm. Kitsov couldn't manage him in the England game. Mm. Once they brought in Oxenche, yeah. we got a penalty. Yes because of Ox's ability, Ox ability or his work on and Cole that day. Mm -hmm. He had two scrums, they took him off. Yeah. And then they brought their second tier one, which is Sintlia. Mm -hmm. And Sintlia can't stand against Ox. Yeah. So the strategy worked that you get your first penalties from this guy. Mm -hmm. And then when Sintlia comes on, it, it, it was just worse. Absolutely. So th the strategy of when to put Ox on mm -hmm. worked. Mm -hmm. Now the same with the bomb squad. Mm -hmm. it, it all depends. Depends when are you going to bring Arches name and when are you going to bring John Klein? When are you going to bring when are you replacing your captain? Yes. With with Kwaka Smith and mm. letting the captaincy go to somebody else. Yes. Bongi can't play 80 minutes. He's the vice captain. Mm. So when are you bringing uh, Dion Stein, uh, Dion uh, Fouri on mm. to replace Bongi and who's going to be the, the captain? Then? Sure. So, so it's all strategy around mm. the bomb squad. They made it fashionable, but it's actually just modern rugby. Absolutely. What do you say to people who say that Kolesi shouldn't have been there because he wasn't ready, whether, whether from his injury or whatever it was? I think people that have that, that feeling in them are totally just hitting the ball in a totally a miss hit. Mm, mm. Siam Chandakulisi is needed in this in this team. Mm. I don't think he plays to his ability as yet. Yes. And he hasn't played to mm. his full ability. But he hasn't played bad. But he brings value still. But he brings so much value mm. to the team itself. Sure. His leadership is outstanding. It's critical. He's, it's, it's critical. Yes, mm. we can put it as critical. Mm. He, his, the influence that he has on on the whole team on senior players yes sir players that are more senior than him mm, mm. is so important and the, that leadership role that cia is, is playing mm. is crucial sure. we, we cannot go into an all-black game without siam tarnakulis yes sir even if we we say he's not good enough as a flanker mm. let him be there sure. let him sing the national anthem mm. out of his Oh, chest. Let the morale be where it needs to be. There, let the morale be there. Yes, let him go on and talk to his, to his soldiers. Mm. Get the whole strategy going through. Mm. Then replace him. So. He will still be at the, on the sideline. He'll still talk to them. Mm. Uh, but, but he's absolutely needed. No, the, uh, people are saying he shouldn't have been there, are living mm. in a dream. Sure. That, that's not right. Mm. The team, though, is, you know, we, we have to admit, as much as they are... Bucky tough, the battered, you know, the last three games have probably been the toughest games of any team at this World Cup. No, for sure. They, they, I, I, I was worried about it and I'm worried about one person. Yes, sir. I'm worried about Bongi Murambi. Yes. He's never had a time to rest. Mm. Even not, even when we played Tonga, we didn't rest him. Yes. And Tonga were big boys. And Tonga were big boys. Yeah. We, 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 we rested him for one game, mm. otherwise he played all the games. Yeah. And, and I'm a bit worried about him. Yes, there's good re replacements in Dion Free. Mm. Uh, I, well, they didn't play uh, Van Staden on the bench, but so Dion Free is doing very well. Yeah. So uh, it's all right, but he's the one of the guys that I think are a little bit battered, but he's a tough boy. Mm. He's a tough boy. He, he, He's also very close to Basotho. Yes, he sir. grew up in Bethlehem. Ah, yes. He's yes, a Sotho yes. speaking man. Yeah, yeah. With a Kosa and him. Yes, sir. But uh, he's, he, he's a tough guy. I think he will make it. But I, personally, I was a little bit worried about him. Mm. But, uh, and all of these things that are going around his head. And, 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 but I don't think that will even reach him. Mm. Mm. Um, I think they'll, they'll definitely, the 
management of, of South Africa is good. They will keep away all these nonsense. Yeah, protect them from the, negativity, them from the and, negativity and the trolls and yeah. social media stuff. That, that will just get to them afterwards. Um, Nick on the line, tomorrow's game, what are your thoughts and where is it going? It's going to be a very difficult game. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I would have answered to you after the first 10 minutes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because to me, it's crucial that South Africa, the first 10 minutes, don't let the All Blacks run away with any points in hand. Uh, I don't think we must we must chase the scoreboard. We can't afford to we do that. We can't afford to do that. <laughs> so the first 10, 10, 20 minutes is very crucial. Yes, sir. If we get through the first 10, 20 minutes being in the lead or close to the lead or close to the points, we're going to win this game. And I'm 100% sure of it. Mm. Because our, our, our determination to win will pull us through that last 40 minutes that we have to play these guys. They are a wonderful team. They are, uh, on paper, they must be one of the best teams in the world. Mm -hmm. But we're not playing on paper, we're playing yes. on grass. Yes, sir. So, South Africa is also an awesome team. Mm -hmm. But we must just not let what, that, what happened in Auckland, yes, where sir. they ran away and, became, and had 14 p points ahead, mm -hmm. and we couldn't really recover. We had to chase. Mm -hmm. We had to chase. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. Mm. We should that first 10, 20 minutes. Assert. It, it, if we are just mm. stable there, uh, they won't win us. We'll, we'll beat them. So we can catch your commentary on Motueding FM on Saturday. No, Saturday I'll be doing SABC2. Okay. Oh, so you're doing SABC2? I'm doing SABC2, okay. uh, Afrikaans, English, and Setswana. And, uh, Gee, so they've got you doing all three. Well, it's uh, <laughs> they, they actually pushed me into the deep side. Are they, try, have they, are they teaching you sign language yet? You might as well throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, sometimes if I get excited, I have my own sign. <laughs> <laughs> and that finger we can't show on the no, camera. No, 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 we're not going to do that now. <laughs> Especially when your ref is Ben O'Keefe. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> what do you say to South Africans that the last two matches, we at times said, Oh, we're playing against the referee also. We're playing against the referee also. Do we whinge a lot? No. Uh, uh, or, I, or is it a valid concern? Uh, we didn't play against the referee. I, yeah. think the, the, I think why I say that, uh, the referee made stupid mistakes, but to both sides. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so it, it wasn't really... If he, if he was a Lawrence, uh, Bryce Lawrence who kept us out of the World Cup in, in 2011, mm. it would have been a different story. Bastard. Because he, he, he only mm. made mistakes towards South Africa yes, because yes. he wanted New Zealand it was clear. to go through. It, it was, was clear. clear. Yeah. Uh, but this one, he made mistakes towards France. He made mistakes towards South Africa. Mm. He made mistakes towards England. He made mistakes towards South Africa. Mm. So we shouldn't really cry about him. Yes, I, don't, I don't think it was. he should have riffed on that level because mm. we don't need those mistakes. Yes, yes. But it didn't put South Africa backwards. Mm. If it did that, it would have been a different story. We would have sworn at him, sworn at him by now. Yes, sir. He would have had very difficult names to pronounce. Yes. But listen, uh, um, we just wanted to thank you for coming to Johannesburg a day early so that you can chat to us. Uh, we just wanted to, to celebrate you. Um, on this platform, we celebrate people that we feel are doing great things or are not celebrated enough or just that the name should be in bigger lights. Uh, that's why we invited you here. But also because on the side, I need farming advice. So I'm also <laughs> going to take you to the side and ask you for farming advice. <laughs> I'm, I'm really honored. And, and, and I mean it out of my heart. I'm, I'm really honored to be on your show. Thank you so I'm much. I'm honored to meet you uh, as a legend yourself. You're the legend, so, sir. You've been no, doing this for 30 years. No, but you've, you've also had a quite a long time that you've been doing it. Oh, yeah, and, 31 and, years. You're right. And, and <laughs> so so uh, it's, it's an honor meeting you. It's an honor to be on your show. Thank you so much. It's, it's, I'm, I'm humbled by at least being here. And it, it was an absolute pleasure coming here and, and trying to put myself towards the, the listeners or, the, or your viewers. So if I'm in the Northwest driving towards Zerust, how far inland is your farm? I'm on the N4. So are you on the N4? Yeah, you must come and pay me a visit. No, no, um, when, when do you go back home? The reason I'm asking, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll be driving to Bots. So I'm I'll, be, well. I'll be there Tuesday or Wednesday. I will see you Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, that would be great. How, how's your biltong? There is some. 
Cholo. I love it. I Cholo. Love it. There's uh, nothing like Buck. Yeah, no. built on. Yes, Cholo, sir. Cholo, yeah, mato, damn, As long as it's um, it's not um, 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 Pofu, because um, that's our totem. Yeah, no, um, obviously that's Eland. Eland, yes. No, this is Kudu. Yes, that's sir. a totem of the uh, uh, Barulu. Uh, yes, but cheap. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, sir. But now I know I can get so far past some training. I've already got training. Oh, can I get training? Yeah. So, uh, luckily, we don't make uh, so far past that trade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could you please indulge us and just do commentary on how the game might go this coming Saturday for the Springboks? Uh, in, in Setswana, obviously. It's, 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 I will try. Okay. Ke sakana lang kope, hone anong. Sakana lang kope, ke fela kong te kham, kham mula, wa 22, wa slopa sa New Zealand. Aaron Smith, ke na tsurin kwele me, faf te terko mura ari nyamun na, ti sakwa no kwileo. Ke na ke tsonzin ke, tse inye, ka moten ka sakana lang kope. Wa tsa kwela te inkha, ke nyamu sakana lang kope, infer mielen we eme tsu kumura. We eme tsu webe ile kafat las khas chakwana. Kau yang cakap faham detail, faham detail kau cakap kelihatan yang faham dari pola, pola tu cakap kelihatan pelah pelah wet, tapi kita kukril, kril wujud sesuatu kau merahu. Kau cakap kelihatan yang cakap kene jesi kril kape wujud dia lende, dia lende tapi kau cakap kelihatan wujud pechan wujud rakyat kau pilih baik leleka. Kau bawa kau cakap cara New Zealand ya, tola tola kelihatan, itu kau lelaki macam cakap kau kaya ni monona, wakar Arons, Kelly Arons kau cakap kelihatan wujud pemula wujud bahasa, Thailand Thailand Afrika Borua, Medinta kau yang di Tano Afrika Borua, lefela kau cakap kelihatan kau New Zealand. From your mouth to God's ears, sir. May that be what happens tomorrow. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that is what happens tomorrow. Uh, but this must act, it should have been the third try already. <laughs> it should have been the third try already. <laughs> this is just the start. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we need to let him go. Uh, you have uh, other things to, to get to. But I will see you on your farm, uh, like I said, on Tuesday or, or Wednesday. 100%. And I'm really looking forward to it. Um, also known as uh, Rampuchani Munsu, yeah. Renir Swart has left the building. He's so legendary. They even named a peanut butter after him. <laughs> And we are done. There's going to be many people experiencing tension in our current times. Whether it's final exams, resolving work issues before year's end, or rooting for your favorite team. So take a tip from an English rugby player and try not to be on the wrong side. Or just please don't be a side. Whether it's a white side or a black side can't make up my mind. Just don't be a side. And have yourself a wow week ahead. This has been another edition of Wow What A Week, coming to you from Amp Studios, part of the Africa Podcast Network. Shout out to our cinematographers, Trevor and his team at Pezulu Works, our audio imaging, courtesy of Otis the Floor Frazier, our guests this evening, this afternoon, this morning, depending on when you're watching this or listening to this, Siv Ngesi and Pa Urm Renir Swart, and our creative producer, Kuvesh Mohan, show producer, Keletso Mudisa Keng. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next week, have a great week in spite of yourselves. <laughs>